to the latest installment of my dad listens to this. I'm Julia the daughter. So that must make me Kevin the dad. It and, must. And Jules, what did you pick for us for this episode? Well, today we are talking about the British girl group, The Pipettes, with their album, We Are The Pipettes. We are? No, they are, Dad. But, okay. but anyway, what do we need to know? Oh, we need to know that The Pipettes were the brainchild of singer, songwriter, actor, promoter, human being, Robert Barry, better known as Monster Bobby. <laughs> He wanted to revive the Phil Spector sound, also known as the Wall sound, but not reviving the Phil Spector personality. Hope not. Yeah. So anyway, the the um, the idea was to um, mash up the Phil Spector sound with a modern twist. This came about when he noticed the reaction the girl group songs uh, got during his DJ sets. With the help of singer, poet, photographer, human being, Julia Clark Lowe's, Bobby recruited friends from the a local Brighton music scene. The first incarnation of the Pipettes consisted of Julia, also known as the Duchess of Darkness, also known as Julia Caesar. Yeah, I like that. Rose Dougal, also known as Rosé, and Rebecca Stevens, also known as Riot Becky. Their backing band was the all-male, ingeniously named Cassettes. I like that. The band never appeared in photos or interviews. The focus was on the three polka dot dressed singers. Despite the manufactured feel to all this, the singers worked together writing the songs and shared credit on all the songs as well. Julia Clark Lowe's left in 2005 and formed her own band, The Indelicates. She was replaced by former and current Welsh language solo artist Gweno Saunders. So now the lineup had a blonde, Gweno, a brunette, Rose, and a redhead, Right, Becky. Intentional? You decide. Hmm. Also that year, the band signed with Memphis Industries. Their debut, We Are the Pipettes. We are? No, not, not, not us. Them. Okay. Anyway, their debut album came out in the UK in July 2006. It reached number 41 on the UK album chart. A god-awful remixed version was released in the United States in October 2007. For more, I see Dad's scathing review on Amazon, which is still up there. It went to number 18 on the Billboard Top Heat Seekers chart, which highlights sales by new and developing artists. Hmm. Contenders, I guess. Uh, The Pipettes played the South by Southwest Festival in Austin, Texas, and started building momentum. At which point, Rosé and Riot Becky both left to pursue other musical interests, which they did. Rosé is currently collaborating with former Blur band member Graham Coxon under the name The Wave. As for Riot Becky, she was in the group called The Projectionists back in the early 10s, and that was all I was able to find out about her. The trail disappears from there. Hmm. So, Riot Becky, if you're out there, if you're listening, please let us know what you're up to these days. Mm Mm-hmm. Now, Gweno's sister, Ani, joined along with Anna McDonald, who soon left to pursue songwriting opportunities. Beth Mabru Bowie joined in 2009 and left later in the year. Mm. Now, it was just a duo consisting of the Saunders sisters. Mm. The second Pipettes album, Earth vs. the Pipettes, was released in September 2010, and the sound was completely different from We Are the Pipettes. Mm. As such, the second album flopped, and the band broke up. Now, Gweno toured as a synth player for Elton John in 2012, and she released more Welsh-language albums, and in 2019 was made a bard of the Cornish Gorset, which I'm probably not pronouncing that right, for services to the Cornish language through music and media. Cool. Her latest album, Tresor, just came out this year, and she's on tour, and if you get a chance, check out her website. It's fascinating. Hmm. As for me, I first heard this song, Pull Shapes, on Little Steven's Underground Garage Show. Really? Back when it used to be on WHJY. I had to find out who this was, and thankfully, Little Steven is one of those people who tells you who sang the song after it's played. You know, he'll do three or four songs, and then he'll go back and say, okay, this was so-and-so, this was Mm -hmm. so-and-so. Um. So anyway, I found the CD on Amazon and bought it just on the basis of that one song, which is always a risky venture. That's true. But this time it really paid off. This is one of those albums I've played three or four times in a row and listening to it. When the U.S. version came out, I picked that up because it was a different cover and I figured more money for the band and was disappointed. Mm. It was remixed by one Greg Wells, who I did some research on, and he is insanely huge. Really? As a songwriter and producer in the music business, um, 
I guess his paw prints have been on music that in total has sold, I think it said like 130 million copies. Whoa. He's worked with so many biggies. But in this case, he totally whiffed on the assignment. Oof. Yeah, it just, this album should have been left alone and released as it was. Because the remix is just, oh, it's just terrible. It just really is. Anyway, the original Memphis Industries version has 14 songs and is 34 minutes long. Mm -hmm. And only one song cracks the three-minute barrier. Mm -hmm. And four songs don't even crack the two-minute barrier. Yep. And you can find it, I think, uh, it's still available on Amazon. And I think it's on eBay as well. And it's all reasonably priced. It's also on YouTube Music for free if you want to listen to it before you buy the album. Okay. So let's dive into this, shall we? Oh, yes, let's. First, the title track, We Are the Pipettes. The Pipettes are the prettiest girls you've ever met, and they're here to take over the world. This is a perfect opening number for the group because it establishes that they are girls who can sing and love to have fun with the audience. They also nailed the vibe of aliens taking over with a distorted voice over the radio waves and also having that ooh sound, uh, synth sound we associate with aliens and music. Maybe the effect is lost on me since I've heard this song so many times in Dad's car, but I think if I heard this for the first time, I'd be like, okay, take me with you. I'm ready to party. And when they say they're not finished with you, you're glad that there's still a whole album to go. Yep. Uh, the intro does give the impression that the ladies have arrived from another planet and they're about to take over Earth. They boldly state they are the prettiest girls you ever met. Mm. And after all is said and done, they will make us hope they haven't finished with us yet. Mm -hmm. This song is the only one on the album that really doesn't try to recreate the wall of sound, retro group, girl sound. It's never going to replace Theme from the Monkeys as best band theme song ever. But it's not bad. Robin of Loxley's drumming. Yes, that's the guy's stage name. Cool. I say is Keith Moon-esque. He's really? Just, he's just all over the place. That's a hell of a statement from on, you. On that song and on the rest of the album. Guy's just got it going on. Hmm. Okay, next track. Pull Shapes. We covered this in our Top 20 Songs for 2020 episode, but I'm going to re-review it here. Also, because I watched the music video, which is a take on British 60s comedies with the costumes and how it's shot. And there's some heavily pixelated butts and she chests here and there. And also, before we proceed further, I did some research and found out that that video is a shot-for-shot -shot remake of a scene in the classic, I guess you could call it, movie Beyond the Valley of the Dolls. There's a scene where I guess one of the characters goes to a nightclub to see a band perform, and that's exactly what happens, hence the pixelation, because Beyond the Valley of the Dolls was either a hot R or a soft X. Or an NC-17. The most surprising part was seeing Cornelius Fudge from the Harry Potter movies make a cameo. At least I think it was him. Had the same face. Can't be sure. He was only in it for like two seconds. And I paused and I was like, I think that could be him, but I can't tell. The pets have the girl group vibe down as they strike Supremes-esque poses. I also dare anyone not to smile when they hear the chimes and strings with their joyful sound. The girls are getting everyone on the dance floor and everyone's clapping along and responding. I will say, though, that the sound of people clapping along in a giant concert arena isn't as convincing where you're watching the music video and they're in a small parlor at somebody's house. But a great song that would be fun to play at any kind of dance party. Okay, now the term pull shapes is Brit slang for dancing. Mm -hmm. Gwenno sings lead, and she sings really well because people are looking like, oh, what's another cute blonde, and she probably can't sing, but she's got pipes. Mm -hmm. And Rosé and Riot Becky chime in. It's an invitation to dance. There's a whole floor before us just for you and me. Gwenno likes the disco, Rosé likes rock and roll, and Riot Becky, hip hop. Mm -hmm. As for the music, this song is so catchy yep. and strings abound the cassettes are in top form and just as a side note in order to stop repeating myself for the rest of the songs on this album i will say it now the cassettes were a crack band tuneful and explosive i will put them right up there with um low straight jackets Ooh, okay they are tight they don't mess around and they know what they are doing all right. Well, if any of the cassettes are listening, then uh, I hope they make you happy. Yep. All right. Uh, you can dance your pants off to every single song on this album. It's impossible not to dance while hearing this song or, at the very least, to tap your foot. Mm -hmm. And if you can't even do that, then check your pulse because you're probably dead. Yep. Uh, the 60s meets the aughts is perfectly realized on this song. And when I first heard it on Little Stevens on the Grand Garage on a Sunday morning at Whole Foods, in receiving 
everything stopped. <laughs> I was just riveted to the radio and didn't process any bills, didn't take in any trucks, didn't do anything. Didn't do shit. For at least three minutes. It was just... Did anyone catch you? Pop heaven. No, because Sundays are slow and I pretty much had the joint to myself, so... Yeah, Sundays are slow at the hospital as well. Yeah. Like would. Now, amazingly, Pole Shapes would did not even chart on the uh, Billboard's Top 100 singles, made it to number 18 on Billboard's 100 Greatest Girl Group Songs of All Time. Wow. And I went through that list and I thought, I hope someone made a playlist on Spotify because there's so much good stuff. I mean, they just covered the whole, not even the whole classic era, but like right up to like, 2017, which was when the list came out. I oh, mean, wow. they just had a, a great range of stuff, and I was stunned that it made it into the top 20. Mm, okay. um, this song is pop perfection in a little less than three minutes. And that drum intro mm -hmm. lifted straight from the Supreme song, Come See About Me, which yeah. I don't have a problem with because I'm listening to this, I'm thinking, I know I should know this from somewhere. And I was just listening to the Supreme's Ultimate Collection and when that song came on, I thought, oh, yeah, there it is. Next track, Why Did You Stay? I had my reasons. A surprisingly introspective song. The pipettes want to know why their man stayed with them as long as they did when they treated him poorly. This is an interesting song to be reviewing, considering the Johnny Depp and Amber Heard verdict that came out this week. I was like, oh, uh, a little too real here. But I think this might be the first time I've heard a song where someone is reflecting on what a bad partner they were. And I know it's definitely the first time I've heard it from a woman's perspective. According to her, it's because she'd had enough of sweet, but I don't think that's the case. There's something else going on that would cause her to self-sabotage and push a nice guy away. But I'm not her therapist, so I can't tell. A good moment of introspection from an unlikely source. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Rosé sings lead on this one, and, and she's asking the ex the question in the title. Because he let her get away with a lot. So many transgressions permitted. Gwendo and Riot Becky tell Rosé, he was so kind, he was so sweet. And Rosé answers, oh yeah? Well, I've had just about enough of sweet. Ugh. Really leans on that T. <laughs> and the way she says it has to be her to be believed because I cannot do justice mm -hmm. to her recitation. Mm -hmm. And the other thing I, I got was for the guy or for anyone, don't be a doormat in a relationship. Please Stand don't. up f for yourself. If she says... Hey, I'm going to go out with this other guy, and he's just a friend. Well, you might as well want to look into that. Or, hey, I'm just going to go out and for a couple of weeks and party my ass off, and maybe I'll come back. I'm going to sleep over with my ex-girlfriend, like we saw on the Dave Ramsey show. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah you might want to you yeah. might want to question that. But, yeah, it is interesting that, you know, I, I don't think I've ever heard a song where the singer says, yeah, I was probably a turd to you, and but why did you put up with it? Mm -hmm. What's the matter with you? Yeah, there's a line that Poison Ivy says to Harley Quinn in the uh, Batman the Animated Series where she looks at her and goes, if you had a middle name, it would be welcome. <laughs> yeah. yeah, probably. Like they, I, I'm sure that people are in relationships like that where you just want someone so bad and you're afraid if you go against them to leave that you'll just put up with with whatever they do. Well, it reminds me of a scene in um, How I Met Your Mother where Barney uh, draws like a graph, like a line graph, and on one axis is the word hot, and on the other axis is the word crazy. And he just draws like a diagonal line, and he says, on this line, there's a certain point where crazy and sexy intersect perfectly, but if you go beyond that, then no, then no, don't put yourself through that. Mm -hmm. Okay, next track, Dirty Mind. Oh yeah? How dirty. This reminds me of a line from Elders React, where they were watching the trailer for Fifty Shades of Grey, and they explained that the most popular demographic for the books was was uh, mothers in their 30s and 40s. And one of them goes, it just shows there's some erotic thoughts lurking behind those indulgent sweet faces. And I guarantee you that stereotype is true. It's always the quietest ones who are the freakiest. This girl thinks she's getting Mr. Squeaky Clean, but instead he wants to do some stuff that makes the devil want to scream. And from the vibe of the song, she's into it. Now, is this a song to play in the background while it's getting it on? Nah, yeah. that's not really what the pipettes are for. This is just something to jam to and enjoy the potentially relatable story. And also try and wonder what the heck those crazy kids got up to. The pipettes are for vertical dancing, which may eventually lead to horizontal dancing. Yeah, as they would say in Grumpy Old Man, the horizontal mambo. 
<laughs> this is this is one of my faves on this album, if not my favorite song on this album. Just the music and it's girl meets boy, and like you said, he's neat and he he practices hygiene, which she's not used to from the other guys that she's dated. Yeah, that's 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 a trend on TikTok where it's like talking about men doing the bare minimum. Like someone said, Oh, if you're out here saying that your man doesn't even wipe his ass. Like, oh, have some standards, please. Well, I just saw this thing, this ad for, I, I think it's a movie. I think it's called, along the lines of, like, What Women Want. Mm -hmm. And it's about uh, this woman whose friends hire a male sex worker for her because she's just not getting any at home. Mm -hmm. And so the guy shows up and he says, you've got me for two hours. Well, what do you want me to do? And she looks at him and says, clean my house. And he looks at her and says, Really? She says, yeah, well, that's the thing. I've got you for two hours, clean my house. Yeah. And he does. And she realizes, wait a minute, this could be a business here. Because what do we really want? We kind of want a guy who can pick up after himself. Yeah. Yeah. In, in other words, the bare minimum. <laughs> I guess. I mean, I, 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 I find myself sucked into a lot of, um, of, um, of, um, What's that? Red, what's that? Oh, Reddit. Reddit, Where, yeah. you know, it's like women complaining about guys and a lot of things is, you know, just not assuming any type of domestic responsibility. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Jeez. Yeah, so there's more here. Um, yeah, you could either off his floor, which is slightly unnerving to them. Mm -hmm. But as you said, he has ideas that could make the devil scream. And I just imagine this, like, nerdy-looking guy. He's got the tie and the short sleeves and the glasses, and he's just doing his thing. But underneath lurks the freak of the week or maybe of all time peter parker on the streets spider-man in the sheets right i've never heard of that yeah like that was the thing with when the other 50 shades of gray movie came out someone was like listen the sex scenes in that movie are boring if you're promising me kinky hardcore sex i want like ropes everywhere like spider-man was involved so that's what I was thinking. Oh, yeah, Peter Parker on the streets, Spider-Man in the sheets. Okay, I was thinking of, like, Dark Peter Parker in Spider-Man 3. No, Dark Peter Parker would just be a dick. <laughs> you, you don't want that. You don't want that. Okay. No. And as the pipettes sing, not he's got a dirty mind. He's got a dirty mind. Just don't know what you're going to find. They're just, like, dropping those T's. Yep, just don't know what you're going to find. She got to know his mind, and the music builds and builds and builds and then explodes as all is revealed to her. And maybe... She's into it, and maybe she just, like, did, like, the Wile E. Coyote silhouette shape through the door type of thing. Mm hmm You never know, but like I said, this is probably my favorite song on the album. Okay, next track. It hurts to see you dance so well. Uh-oh, it's everyone's worst nightmare. Well, those of us who like dancing and clubbing anyways. You get on the floor, and all of a sudden, your ex is there, and they're not only better at dancing than you, but they're better than everyone. Who wouldn't be staring daggers? This song is mostly rage, but then there's this moment of bittersweetness where she remembers what it was like when they danced together and she knows they'll never have that moment again. There's the Portuguese word for it. I'm going to pronounce it the Brazilian way because it's the only way I've heard it. Soldage or soldad, which basically means I am sad that we can never experience this moment the sad way again. It's one of those words where you hear it and go, oh, English just isn't cutting it for me. It's almost like a sadder version of those scenes in romantic movies where the lead couple is dancing for a second, they're the only people there. And what surprises me about this song is how it doesn't lose its sad message, even with the upbeatness of the music, which isn't a feat everyone can pull off, and I give the Pets major credit for that. Mm. Yeah, they share lead vocals on this one. And it's 1.30 at the club, and things are not just going well, because, mm -hmm. yeah, that ex of theirs is dancing with someone else. And like they sing, it just hurts to see you dance so well because that used to be us, mm -hmm. but not anymore. Mm -hmm. And he never knew how much in love she was with him. I guess she just never told him, just assumed, yeah, this is always going to last. And for some reason it didn't. And then all of a sudden it's two o'clock on the dance floor and she's going home alone. Mm -hmm. And like you said, it's sadness that you can dance to. And it's mm -hmm. a neat feet f-e-a-t that they mm -hmm. managed to pull off so kudos to them kudos next track judy i sang this at the smarts talent show once and really sherry who ran the program said did you say rip out her spleen what was that she couldn't believe it oh yeah that's what judy wants to do to her mom in this song and judy is the cool bad girl at school who makes the boys heads turn and draws the attention of the shy quiet kid yet there's another deep moment where judy's friend realizes it's all a front and while some people might think that judy is cool now 
there's going to come a time where people get sick of her bad girl persona and get fed up or annoyed and leave her alone. But the friend never says so out loud out of fear that Judy will kick her ass. It's like if someone put a story about one of their childhood friends from their past to music, leaning on the happier aspect of nostalgia. Such a fun bop as all these songs pretty much are. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I, I look at it as like bad girl Rosé meets badder girl Judy, mm. who could kick Rosé's arse, mm-hmm. as they say in mm-hmm. Britain. United Maybe. Kingdom. Yeah. Oh, all over? Okay. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, Judy can get the older boys to turn their heads and can make the older girls wish that she, Judy was dead. Mm-hmm. But they become pals. And I think Rosé feels a responsibility to look out for Judy and is concerned about what happens when Judy gets older. Because like you said, that act can get pretty tight and no one's going to want to know her. And I think maybe Rosé sees that, wow, I could turn into this if I keep going down this going, this way, yeah. going down this path. So maybe I can just nip it in the bud. Mm-hmm. Okay, next track, A Winter Sky. A girl is sitting alone underneath a winter sky. Doopy, doopy, doo, doo. And a boy spies her and says hello. Then we hear the words, the end it came too soon, which made me think, oh my God, did she get murdered? Yeah, that's what I was wondering. I can't really tell. This song is so wistfully beautiful and proves that the pipettes can do more than a bouncy dance number. There's a portion in the middle where their voices are layered on top of one another with arrangements that wouldn't be out of place in a church choir, as if to indicate the solemnity of the moment. It's also a haunting song, but one I wouldn't mind listening to again just to let my feelings wash over me. Mm -hmm. This is the slowest and longest song on the album, Mm -hmm. and it clocks in at (gasps) three minutes and two seconds. (gasps) Oh my god. Yep, so yeah, a girl is painfully alone, a boy sees her, understands her, and I love this line. Unsure of what to do and lacking in imagination, he said... Hello, which is what we would all do because we, 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 we're not in the play. We don't have like these great lines. We're all weebs. It's not going to be um, uh, the sweet smell of success with Tony Curtis and Burt Lancaster where it's just all yeah. one great line after another because people don't talk like that in real life. Mm-hmm. Um, and you think, ah, oh, they're like kindred spirits. Mm-hmm. But then the pipettes sing underneath a winter's moon. The last time we saw her, it came too soon. I'm thinking, if it's a winter's moon, werewolf? Vampire? Uh, Something worse? She either got kidnapped or unalived. Unalived. I I, I like that. Undeaded, like the vampires do. Well, that's what you have to say on TikTok, because if you say the word kill, then they flag it for inappropriate content and take it down, because they think you're promoting murder just by saying the words kill or death. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yep. They think it's a children's app. It's not. Oh, okay. Yeah, and that just can't be good at all unless they see her and the boy go off hand in hand. But even then, you don't know well, what's going to happen after they disappear over the horizon or over the hill. Mm-hmm. One of them could be dead. Could be the guy. We don't know. Mm. Maybe that's maybe that's how she ensnares her victims. It's the mystery. All right. It could be. But then again... It all came soon, too soon, and no matter how you slice it, that just doesn't sound good at all. Nope. But it's a nice slow song, and like you said, it's got kind of that choir thing going on, Mm -hmm. and it just Mm -hmm. sounds all great until you really listen to the words and realize, hmm, Stephen King territory? There's something funny going on around here. Could be, and not funny, haha. No. Next track, Your Kisses Are Wasted On Me. I never really liked this song as a kid because it sounded like they were yelling at me. I know, they're, <laughs> I know they're yelling at the guy, but it still doesn't sit right with me. And the way they say the word boy just makes me uncomfortable. Ugh. And the story is fine. She's telling a guy that they're through because he's not getting the hint. But oof, does this song rub me the wrong way. It's a song I could skip easily. Oh, I love this song because, like, it's just Riot Becky has had it. And she's just all attitude. And, yeah, she is kind of yelling Throughout this song, and she lets this boy know in no uncertain terms her feeling. He doesn't make her smile, get out of her face, and she's going to chase someone else like a man, maybe. Mm-hmm. And she tells him he doesn't send her wild, he's just a child. And then Gweno comes along and does some heavy vocal lifting for Riot Becky, because Bex has a thin voice, but she just gets over on sheer personality with this song, and you would not want to be on the receiving end of her rant Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because she is just absolutely had it with you. Yeah. Next track. Tell me what you want. Yeah, girls aren't mind readers. Uh, They need to know where you stand. 
The well, pip- that goes both ways. Yeah. The pipettes are up front about it, too. Tell me what you want because I'm sick of you playing this game with me. Because I want an honest man, and if you can't be honest about your feelings towards me, then I don't want you. Sorry, not sorry. Which I really respect. And one of the reasons I love this song is because the harmonies are so easy to sing. I actually learned the lower harmony part from you, uh, singing along in the car, so now I can sing both melody and harmony easily. And the song ends on a bittersweet note because we don't know what happened next. But all we're certain of is that she does long for him. Or maybe not even him, just for the truth. Hmm. Now, let me ask you something. Mm-hmm. Um, when you were saying, you know, that in this song, the Pipettes just want a, a BS-free guy. No secret no secret games, just be up front. Mm-hmm. And like you said, you know, basically the same, tell me what you want. And the thing is, it's like, I don't know if this works both ways, but I've been in some, you know, dating relationships and what have you. And sometimes even, even now with your mom, every great once in a while, okay, okay what's wrong? Nothing. nothing. No, something's wrong. No, nothing. Like, okay, do I pursue this or do I leave her alone? I think in mom's case it's that she doesn't want to bother you. But I can't speak for all the other girls that dated you. Yeah, but I want to be bothered. But I think yeah. as you learn, you know, you get to a certain point where, like, okay, if they just keep saying nothing, then leave them alone. And then eventually mm-hmm. they'll come around and tell you what they want, which always just, which always happens when you're a mom. Or just sit and be there for like like close by. That way in case they change their mind, they know like you're right there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is the only song on the album that I think is just okay. I mean, oh. I like it, but I think it's all right. It's not really, you know, making me get up and, you know, bop around like I've lost all my motor skills. I like it a lot. But... Yeah, it's all right. Mm. Because it's not love, but it's still a feeling. This might be the cutest request for a one-night stand I've ever heard, but truth be told, it's not that much of a hookup song, more of a live-in-the-moment song. If you just want to dance with the guy and then maybe have sex afterwards, that's totally cool, since both parties seem enthusiastic and on the same page. I could also see this being a song for a situation that's friends with benefits. And what keeps the song from being too fluffy with the lyrics and music are how they allude to the attraction between the two. It's not love, but it's still a feeling. Mm. That feeling is lust. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, No whining or dining, just bumping and grinding. Gwenno, Rosé, and Riot Becky start vertical dancing with their guys, but they want to get horizontal eventually. Mm -hmm. Um, It's that rock and roll dancing that leads to this kind of sinning. Can I get an amen? No. No, no, I cannot. Um, And if you listen very carefully at the beginning of the song, it starts off with like the little record pops and scratches. Uh, I don't know why, but it does that with this song. Um, yeah, so they start off dancing, and it's like, okay, this is, he knows how to move, she knows how to move, this could be something more. And it kind of reminds me of a Go-Go song um, on their talk show album called Yes or No, but it's just Belinda Carlisle, she goes up to the sky and just says, look, I just want to dance, I don't want anything beyond that, just, Mm -hmm. you know, give me a yes or no. Because, mm-hmm. you know, I've seen you move, you look good, you know, we can dance, and that's that's all I want. That's kind of it. Just give me three or four minutes of your time. Mm-hmm. Yes or no? Uh-huh. Oh. Next track, Sex. The opening with the drum sounded like Uptown Girl by Billy Joel for a sec. You can hear it if you listen. Okay. I, yeah. Yep. This is the opposite of Tell Me What You Want, where we go from no communication to a bit too much talking. The time for talking is now past, and uh, we need to get into the action. This may have one of the catchiest choruses ever as well, with Just rest, just rest, just rest your pretty head. That's what I like about the pipettes. Even if you don't remember anything else about the songs, you're going to remember most of the choruses always. And since they asked so sweetly, I hope that he did rest his pretty head. Since the song ended on a literal happy note, I'm going to assume he did. Oh, I looked at this from a completely different point of view. Oh, no. Yeah, it took me a few listens to figure out why this song has this title. And I looked at it as like, it's the girl talking and she's saying the boy said that they could talk about whatever she wanted because she loves to talk about anything. Then he says, let's try something new that doesn't involve talking. Because just rest your pretty head, the old close your eyes and think of England. Oof. Yeah. And from there it gets harsh in how this this man really feels about this woman because he says, no offense, but when you get going, you really can be quite a bore. Ooh. Ouch. Because it's like, yeah, it's like, I yeah, thought he just, meant that just, was talking. Like once you get going. When you get going, when you're it. talking. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. He just kind of needs her for one, 
thing and he's just kind of waited out and I guess he's felt yeah I've waited I've waited out long enough let's stop with let's stop with the talking and just you know don't trouble yourself just rest your pretty head huh. oh yeah and I thought okay now I know why the song's called sex I absolutely get it yeah because it's kind of like uh I don't know I guess he thinks okay all she likes to do is talk there's not much substance there but Physically, she's got the goods, and what do I got to do to get there? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Aww. harsh. Next track, One Night Stand. Even with the Rodgers and Hammerstein reference in the lyrics, I'm not sold on this song. Cross a crowded room. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I'm not saying people are purely nasty or purely cute. People are multifaceted. But when it comes to the pipettes, I very much prefer the cute side. There's only so much nasty I can handle. Musically, the song doesn't really work either because the call and response isn't doesn't sync up. It's almost like the lead singer is a hair ahead and the backup singers are a hair behind. I believe they fix this rhythmic discrepancy later on, but in the beginning it's just enough to be annoying. Life is short and we don't need more nastiness, so skip. Huh. Mm-hmm. This is probably my second favorite song on this album. Uh, well, eh. um, I kind of look at this as Because It's Not Love Part 2. This is like what happened after. Hmm. Um, but in this case, apparently signals have been mixed. The girls are all just wham, bam, thank you, Sam. Mm. See what I did there? Mm-hmm. Um, while a guy thinks it was something more. And it's kind of a neat role reversal because usually a lot of songs are the other way. Where, yeah. Yeah. But anyway, um, Riot Becky is adamant that it's just a one-night stand. She cannot stress it enough. Well, without breaking her voice anyway. And like you said, she's doing the eyes before... Gweno and Rosé chime in. I, I yeah. think it works. Because uh, it's uh, like, she's really trying to stress the point that it's like, you know, here's your hat, what's your hurry? Yeah, but mus- musically and rhythmically, it's off. Because so this really is like listening. an uncommon thing in music, do you think? or? No, I don't think it's uncommon, but I just noticed it. It just irks you? Yeah. Oh, okay, so it's just a personal thing. Yes. Okay, I, I can appreciate right. that, but I love this song. Okay, next track. A, B, C. Not to be confused with A, B, C, D, E, F, U. That's another song. This, Yeah, you haven't heard that one? I've heard of it. Who does it again? I think you might like it. Let me Google it really quickly. A, B, C, D, E, F, U. Uh, do, 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 do. Googling, buffering. Okay. La, la, la. Listeners patiently waiting. Okay. Okay, we got it. Uh, Gail. Okay. That's the name of the person who does All right, I will, I will check it out. Yeah. I thought you were going to say not the Jackson 5 song. Oh, no, no, no. I was thinking of A, B, C, D, E, F, U, because it's kind of the same vibe as the Pipettes, but a bit more vulgar, and I think you'd like it. Okay. Well, because of the vulgarity? Are you assuming I'm vulgar? No, just one of the lyrics what makes me laugh, and I think it would make you laugh, too. Okay. Okay. This song, this is a song lamenting the book smart guy who can't read women, or in this case, not even that he can't read women, he's just too busy studying and he doesn't notice there's someone who wants him. And it's not that she resents him for being smart, she thinks he's kind of cool for knowing so much. It's more that she wishes he'd get his head out of those books and start looking at her. He's also the tall, shy, quiet, bookish type, which drives some women crazy. Yet this is a song where even the chorus isn't enough to save it. Cute story, but blah execution. You either need to make it mellow or balls to the wall, and this song misses the mark with trying to do both. Ah, what do you know? I love this song. Come uh, on. I have a lot of um, opinions. That's why we have this show. That's true, even though your opinions are wrong. <laughs> your opinions aren't axioms, Dad. Ooh, ooh, someone went to college. <laughs> um, for me, this so- this song treads similar territory to um, a, a Leslie Gaw song called Wonder Boy, and it's the same thing. Leslie's situation, you know, she meets this guy, this, this boy in, in school, and... Um, she says the the best line is, you know, um, if you took a course in loving, I doubt that you would pass. <laughs> yeah. Um, so anyway, it's, yeah, girl falls for Brainiac, who's smart up to a point. He knows the movements of the planets, but he doesn't know how to move her. Mm-hmm. He just cannot see what's in front of him. It's like this girl just has the hots for him. It's like, guy, you got to get your nose out of a book at some point. Yeah. Because he knows about... A, B, C, one, two, three, but not X, T, C. Not the drug. Is it the drug that they're referring to? No, just it's just X, T, C, the feeling. Okay. He probably doesn't know the feeling, but I bet he knows the band. Hmm. Okay. Definitely, definitely, a, definitely a, a nerd slash geek band fave. X, T, C. Check mm-hmm. them out. Okay. Great stuff. Maybe we'll do a podcast on them someday. I do oh, have yeah, some we probably stuff. will. Um, 
But yeah, it's just like, get up and dance. Just, just, just pay attention to this girl who's in front of you, boy. Come on. And I love how they sing, not categories, but categories. Mm-hmm. To, to get it to to get it to fit in there, but I I think it's a hilarious yeah. song. I love it, and I I feel for them. I, I do. Maybe but, he'll look up from that book, but it could depend what book it is he's reading. Yeah, that's true. All right, final track. I love you. This feels like ABC Part Two, where she nabs the smart guy. She's imperfect, but she tries, and it's rather sweet. She thinks she could be better, but she loves him, and he knows. She doesn't have to change at all as long as she's sincere in her feelings for him. The ending with the repetition of the lyrics and the musical arrangement conjures up the image of two young lovers spinning in a circle as they're holding hands, which is sweet. I'm getting dizzy. I'm going to throw up. <laughs> and it fits the wholesome tone of the song, which is what I was going to say. Oh. Uh, and yet, it's not the best note to end an album on because the finality of the song doesn't leave a real emotional impact. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I kind of look at it as like Ro- Rosé sings lead on this, and she's just not feeling confident. Mm-hmm. She confesses that she's not smart, she can't tell jokes, and her cooking is a choking hazard. But she loves this guy, and she's like she's like really trying. And I don't know if he even knows how she feels, because she says that she woke up one morning almost screaming that I love you, but she doesn't. She keeps it inside, and maybe mm-hmm. it's because, like, I don't know, Poor self-image, no confidence, and it's like, mm-hmm. oh, you're everything and I'm nothing kind of thing, which mm-hmm. you really shouldn't do. Yeah. Um, and to me, this song starts off the same way that Dirty Mind did, and I bet those two songs could be mashed up no problem. And I don't know. I kind of like the way that the song ends. I think it puts... I, I think it ends the album perfectly. It's just, I love you, and then boom, boom, mm-hmm. and that's it. I don't think anything could follow this song. Mm. So overall, the pipettes are a fun time. It's like when you're on the dance floor. Some songs the DJ plays gets everyone on their feet. Some others you could take a break to rest, get food, or go to the bathroom. But at the end of the night, you'll be happy that you went. To the bathroom? (laughs) To the club. Oh. So if you want to check out some potentially great party music, give this album a try. And as always, give more girl group love. Okay. Um, Looking back on what I've said about this album and about... each song individually, I feel that I've just come up woefully short uh. about how great I think this album is. The singing and the harmonies are great. The playing is just phenomenal. It really is. It's full of hooks and the songs will stay with you. And Monster Bobby succeeded on all fronts with melding the classic girl group sound with the modern twist. Like, it definitely has a lot of today's attitude. Mm-hmm. I mean... The, the pipettes do stand up for themselves. They they um, they got their own thing going on, and it's great. I mean, this album makes me happy. Happy. It makes me feel like dancing badly, like the old dance so no one can see. But they're like, you know, someone better call a doctor for this guy because he's, mm-hmm. he's just having some problems here. Mm-hmm. And I really wish they could have held it together for more than just this album. But we have it. It exists, Mm -hmm. and I am just so grateful that this album exists. I just love it that much. I cannot recommend this album enough. If you do get it, please make sure that it's the British release on the Memphis Industries label. Don't get the version where it's the yellow album cover, and it's a takeoff on Attack of the 50-Foot Woman, Mm -hmm. where the three of them are just towering over the city, and it's a great it's a great homage. You can see it. You can see the cover online. But don't get it. But don't get that version, please. No. Um, if you don't want the whole album, at least just get Pull Shape somehow because you really do need that song in your life. Mm-hmm. All right. As always, thank you for listening to the latest installment of My Dad Listens to This. Like, comment, subscribe, and all that jazz. If you follow me on social media, I post the episodes there. If you're friends with my dad, tell him what episode you want and he'll email it right to your inbox. As always, thank you for listening to My Dad Listens to This. We'll be back next time with another album to nitpick and gripe about. Dad, anything you want to say before we sign off? Polka dots go with everything. You heard it here first. Good night.